Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I have a wonderful two-part activity that combines both science observation and art. We will be observing both butterfly and moth wings and also recreating a close-up of the scales. So for the science part of the activity you'll need a microscope. You'll also need some specimens to observe. Here I have a jar that I've collected many different species of butterflies, moths, dragonflies, bugs. And so we'll just be observing the moths and butterflies for this activity. You'll also need some magnifying glass, some tools for the microscope. This is optional, but you could also you get a journal to record your findings. Here I have my and my son's nature journal. And for the second part of the activity, which is the craft activity, you'll need some reference books, you'll need scissors, glue, some cardstock, um, you could also use just regular paper and some cutouts or pages of photography magazines or any magazines you have lying around. So let's get into it. The book I'm using as a reference for this lesson is called The Butterfly House and it's written by Katie Flint. It says, butterflies and moths are flying insects all included in a big group called Lepidoptera which means scaled wings. So I love here on the side how it has a close-up drawing of the scales. The other book I'm using for my lesson is called Butterflies and Moths and it's by Closer Look Books. It was published in 1979. It explains how color of the wings is a mixture of both pigment and light refractions. Closer, I see like the dots and mm -hmm. the, the little like compartments. Yeah. Of, like, dots. Mm -hmm. Dots around the edges. Mm -hmm. I don't like the shape of the wing. That's not the shape yeah, of the wing. Yeah, that's great. Lepidoptera comes from the Greek word lepis, meaning scale, and petron, meaning wing. Each wing is covered by thousands of tiny scales. I'll try and get a there's this one. So I just found this little tiny wing in there and I'm gonna try and observe this one and see what we can see. Oh, it looks like It is truly breathtaking to see these scales up close. I can actually see it. It's good. <laughs> well, that's what it's so now for the second part of the activity, I'm just going to browse through this book and try and find butterflies that I could match to the pages here. And I'll show you what I find. So here I found colors that would suit a apricot sulfur butterfly or a large emerald moth or a peppered moth. And so the one I decided on is to do the Crocious Moth from Madagascar. And here I found the perfect cutouts for it. So I'm going to start that now.
my son's doing his own one using the second method, which is much easier for children. And I do help him a little bit on the first few rows, just to show the correct spacing between the strips and the correct spacings of the rows. He chose the color scheme. He liked the idea of the blues gradually getting lighter. So the butterfly he decided to do was a blue morpho. Here I've done some scales here using the second method, and it is the scales of a monarch butterfly. And here I did some scales here, much thicker scales using the second method as well, and it is of the peppered moth. And finally, here is the Croesus moth using the first method. And I just am so happy and pleased with how it turned out. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them down below. And as always, thanks for watching.